my handmade by Susan. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've sat in front of the camera to show you all the things that I've been working on. Usually I find that when May hits, the next couple of months are just so busy with kids' birthday parties, Mother's Days, and all these wonderful events that happen with the long weekends. But I have a couple minutes today, so I thought I would just grab my camera and record a, few, a short segment of what I've been working on. And if you're a return viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you're new here, welcome. Uh, by the way, I should say this before I forget, I would love to do a giveaway. So if in my comment below, you could just leave a message, really anything, uh, maybe a hello, or maybe just you know sharing with me what your favorite thing is to do. Is it paper crafting? Is it knitting? Is it quilting or sewing in general? I would love to know what is the one thing or two things or whatever it is that brings you joy. And so to kick it off, I've got a couple of things to, to maybe take you through. So really quickly, you're probably getting sick of looking at this no frail cardigan that I've been working on. I I love, I think my knitting mojo has returned and I've knit quite a bit of the body. So um, again, this is a petite knit, right? So I've, I've you cast on from the neck, I separate it for the sleeve and really it's just mindless knitting. And I think I've got maybe a couple more inches to go. Um, and then I would knit the sleeve. So, you know, it's, it's um, flying off my needle pretty quickly and I'm quite excited that my knitting no mojo has returned. I just don't have a lot of time these days to knit, but when I do, um, that's the perfect project because I find that if I put a project down for a long time and pick it up again, it's frustrating because I don't remember what I was doing before. And it's just, it, it takes, it takes a few minutes to kind of come back to me in terms of what I should really be doing with the project. And when it's just simple stock in it, it's great because I can put it down, pick it up two weeks later, and there's really no trying to remember, you know, where I was, what row of the pattern, because it's so simple. It's almost kind of like stock, stock knitting, right? It's like, it's just straightforward stock in it. And I feel like this is what that project is. Another thing that I've been working on is a, Something I probably shouldn't have picked up and started, but I just couldn't help it. So let me show you what that is. Usually I keep, and it's quilting. Usually I keep my quilting project in a container like this. I'm sure you've seen these. They're just great because it's basically one box per project. And I normally don't work on more than one because it just overwhelms me and I just can't handle it. So. I'm pretty good about that where if I start something, I will definitely finish it. And so this one project at a time, I, I think it's really important because then it's just so easy to start the next thing, which is totally fine if, if that's what you're interested in. But I just know for myself, I, I won't finish it. And so basically I've got all the projects in here. So what is it? Can you guess? If you follow me on Instagram, then you may already know, but let me pull up the pattern here so you can see it. Are you ready? It's the dinosaur quilt. This is by Elizabeth Hartman. And I have another quilt that's by her and it's the whale, the whale quilt that my wonderful knitting and quilting friends made my son when he was born. So I'm a huge fan of Elizabeth Hartman. And so this is actually one of her first projects, my first project of hers that I'm making. I know there's so many dinosaurs here. I don't know if I'm gonna make all of them. This is the larger size. The smaller size is basically, you know, I think like two thirds of it. I, I was contemplating whether or not I should get the kit, but I didn't end up doing it because this pattern seemed just at a glance, right? Just looking at this, it looks pretty complicated. And I really wasn't sure if I would make the whole thing. And the kit is a huge, it's a pretty significant investment and I didn't wanna purchase something where I make one block and I just don't finish, right? It's just so overwhelming to have, I think it was like more than 30 fat quarters, like just staring at me if I lose interest, right? So what I did was I went through my scrap bin and I picked out enough blue and gray. Actually, I picked up the gray background from the quilting store because I wanna make sure if I am interested to continue to make this quilt, 
the background piece is the most important. So I made sure that the quilt shop had enough of the background piece and I wrote down what that piece was. And so if I am interested to finish the whole quilt, I, I have a way to purchase more of the, the gray background, which is the color I selected. So I went ahead and made and just started with one, right? Because it, it just seemed pretty complicated to me and I wasn't sure. So I started with one quilt and it was so much fun. I couldn't stop at one that I went back to the quilt shop and picked out just a bunch of different fat quarters and different colors and just coordinating and making sure everything goes. And I think that was really a good way to go because I only bought what I needed at a time. And then if I wanted more, I can always go back and get more versus having 30 to 40 fat quarters just sitting there staring at me and really not knowing if it was something I was going to continue. So here's one of the blocks. He's a little green dinosaur. I think he has a name, but I just called him dinosaur. I, I don't really know the difference. If you ask my son, he would tell you. He knows everything. Here's a blue one. I think these two are so cute together. Here's another one. Her patterns were so easy to follow. They were so straightforward. And this, they just came together so fast because it, it's almost kind of like uh, uh, fair iron knitting, right? Where you change color all the time. You just couldn't wait because you want to see what the next block looks like. I think the, the hardest part with this project is really cutting. Uh, cutting all the pieces was, was not a walk in the park, right? Because I think on average, you know, any one of these quilts maybe was like, I would say like, 40 little pieces I had to cut out. I had learned a few tricks uh, while doing this. Number one, super helpful to pick up uh, one of these, what do you call it? Uh, just little labels, right? Because then you have to put down, you know, A, B, C, D, and as you're cutting them, you label them. So I thought this was super important. Uh, what's also really important is to have a dedicated, dedicated place for this project because it is probably not possible to finish one block in one setting, right? One sitting. You you probably have to do, um, you probably have to cut it, then you have to sew it, then you have to iron it, then you put the pieces together. And so it was really helpful to have, I have these party trays, you know, plastic cheap party trays, and I would just use those to place all the, the cut out blocks uh, that are labeled. And so, especially with little kids, like, you know, I don't have like four hours in a row to work on something. I may have 30 minutes. So I would just quickly uh, cut up the pieces, put it on the party tray with a label, and then I can just lift the tray up, put, put it somewhere high where my children can reach them because I'm sure if my son sees all the little pieces, he's gonna just mess it all up, right? So putting it on a tray allows me to move it and put it somewhere safe. So, um, Number one is making sure you have those labels so you can label your pieces. Number two, putting the cut pieces on something that you can move around because it's not, it's unlikely that it's just gonna stay there for um, a long period of time when you have another you know, hour to sew. And then number three, I think it's really important to iron all your pieces. I don't know about you, but when I quilt, I'm constantly ironing because I like my pieces flat. And so it's good to have a small ironing surface. So I just had like a little board. Um, I, I don't have it in front of me, but otherwise I'll show you, but it's just literally like a square. And um, yeah, I just set it right next to the, the cutting table next to my sewing machine, because I don't really need like a huge ironing board for a little piece that I, that I uh, quilted, right? And so just having a really small area with the ironing board was super helpful and just being very organized, right? So I have all the little pieces that were cut out in a plastic bag. Now, obviously when I'm sewing, this comes out of the plastic bag. This sits in a, a container. So as I'm cutting and there's small scraps, I just throw it in here because they all come in handy. Like you never know when you may need, here's an, a perfect example, a little piece for the dinosaur's eye. And I prefer to cut out of a scrap piece than to open up, you know, sort through my pile, open up a big piece, trim a, like an inch strip off. I just find it easy if they're all already kind of pre-cut into smaller pieces. And so 
you know, obviously I've got the, the blues that I'm working on. I've got the, the orange that I thought was super cute. You obviously need um, basic white and black. And then I've got more blues and the greens. I think I, I love this uh, muted greens. I think they're really pretty. So these are the colors that I'm working with to make the dinosaur quilt. I had so much fun with it, I couldn't stop. And then I had to clean it all up and put it away because I was working on my children's birthday party. And so I, I can't really have like piles of stuff that it overwhelms me. So I, what I did was I, I just cleaned up the quilt, put it in the container, put it away, and then I stopped working on it. I haven't taken it out uh, maybe in the last two weeks. I was working on this like one block a day and in several days and I, I, I really hope I finish this quilt because my son loves dinosaurs and I know he will love this quilt so we'll, we'll see how many I make you know there's a there's no pressure right it's just whenever um, the quilting bug hits me again I'll, I'll pick it up and I'll just keep making more blocks and I'm sure it's not going to be the exact number uh, that Elizabeth Hartman's pattern called for to make the quilt but I'll make it work. I'll just keep going until I either run out of fabric or I run out of patience. But for now, I'm, I'm enjoying them and they will sit in the box. So in terms of birthday parties, what I usually like to do is, especially for my daughter, for party favorites, I, I love to make them. Uh, I, 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 just, I just think it's a perfect excuse for me to make something and make a lot of it. To me, that's that's really fun. I really enjoy kind of just repeating the process and not really have to use my brain and think about it. So some of the things I've done in the past, and I thought I would show you, they're all in this little basket, are here accessories for little girls. So for example, these scrunchies, I, I think at one point in time made 50 of them. I have a little trick for how I make these. Uh, maybe next time I'll put together a YouTube video and show you how to do it. I don't do the, you sew the strip and you turn it inside out. No, I am not turning 50 strips inside out. That's the, that's the, that, that is not fun. So I have a trick for how you do this and literally you just sew down the line and by the time you're done sewing, it's already flipped in, um, it's already flipped. So that's my, my secret. Uh, I'll show you guys how to make it next time. So I've made quite a few, you know, the, all the girls love these little scrunchies and I, I really like them with the bunny ears. I think they're just so cute on their hair. You know, you can see the little bunny ears. I made green ones. And so usually what I'll do is if it's a you know rainbow theme party, then I will make rainbow uh, hair accessories. And I've also made these little hair clips in the past, right? So I think for this birthday party, which was last year, the colors were purple and pink. So I went to Julianne's and I, I, I love polka dots, right? So I picked out this polka dot uh, ribbon and there's quite a few of them. There's another one and then another. This one is super cute. I use, uh, what do you call those? T -tol. Um And I just scrunched them up. And the piece that I use in the middle that you can see here, I bought them from Tabao which is a Chinese marketplace. Usually I go to Shanghai pretty often for work and I will pick these up and I'll place an order. So by the time I'm there, it, it, it's delivered to my hotel room. But I found you can buy them from Amazon or Etsy. I think you can just search under Rizlin, Rizlin, you know, hair accessory and it pops up. It's like, you get like a ton for a few dollars. And, and uh, these are just little pearls I picked up and just pop them in the middle. And then you can also buy these um, clip off Amazon and it's so easy. And then you just hot glue it. Usually, so here's my trick for you if you're interested in making hair accessories. Usually when you make these ribbon uh, hair tie, hair clips, when you wrap them, you usually do it with thread. So all of YouTube videos that I've seen, people use thread. You either stitch them together which is what I think 90% of what people do, or you kind of just kind of wrap them with thread and then you have to tie a knot and bury it. No, similar to the scrunchies that I do, I, I'm not going to spend that time sewing them together. What I do is there's a special thread that's used. I bought them from Taiwan and they're these elastic thread, kind of looks like a, a dental floss, 
but it, it's, it's softer. And all you do is you literally just take your pieces, you wrap them. By the time you're done, you just pull them off and it's done. Like five seconds, it's done. There's no threading your needle, sewing them together, tying a knot, clipping it off. I'm not doing that. Uh, I discovered these, these, these threads and all you do, literally, you just wrap them. Let me show you, I've got one right here. So here's what they look like. This is what the thread looks like. I don't know what they're called in English. It doesn't, there's no label on it, but um, I, my friend in Taiwan bought this for me and she shipped it to me. And I've been using this roll for the last, I don't know, three years, four years, and I haven't run out. And I make this every year for her birthday party. So there's quite a bit in here. And like I said, it's just like a little, I don't know if you can see, it's just, yeah, you just wrap them and then pull it off, that's it. So that's my trick for how to make this. The next time if I make more, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to take a video and, and show you. And this year, I'm going to make these. These are faux leather, and so there's no wrapping involved. It's so easy. You just trace the template. There's so many of them available online for free. You just trace them. I bought these faux leather off Amazon, and you literally just hot glue them and I bought these little centerpiece here on Amazon as well. I can link them in the description box below and they're so cute and you can make more layers so they're bigger and heavier but I kind of just like them simple like this. So my daughter really loves rainbow and all her friends love rainbow too. I think that's a princess in the middle. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's a silver one. Here's another one, and I usually make two matching ones at a time in case they want to, you know, one on each side. Here's a princess one with a hair clip on the back, and another rainbow glittery one. So uh, these are super cute. So what I'm planning to do for my daughter's birthday is I would just put, you know, two of them together. Um, I usually will have like a cute little uh, piece of cardstock, and I would cut these slits in there, and then clip these on and put it inside a little plastic bag with a thank you message. So I love making these. These are so much fun. I, I don't think my I, I would do this for my son, but um, I'm enjoying it for my daughter. And something else I do for their birthday parties, you know, I can simply do a e-bite and just send it out and email it to everybody. But no, I, I look for opportunities where I can include my handmade items. So what I would do is I would make a handmade birthday card. So uh, her theme is unicorn. I'm not gonna show you the, the message here, but as you can see, it's, it's a unicorn that I cut out with a die cut and I just, I glue them on with a message and it's so much fun. I just, I, I love it. Um, I bought the die cut from Tabao as well, uh, the China uh, Chinese e-market um, marketplace, but I found them on Amazon. So I will link them in the down bar in, in case you're interested. And usually, in addition to the handmade invitation, I usually would make coordinating thank you cards. So this would be her thank you cards to go with this year's birthday party. I think I mentioned it before, but I think a handmade card is so special and for every present my children open, I make sure they write a thank you card. It could be, a, you know, a very short message. It could be scribbling with sticker for my son because he's not even, like, he's just, you know, three. He can't really, he doesn't even know how to hold a pencil, right? So I would um, just give him stickers and tell him to kind of just do whatever he wants with it, even if he just wants to scribble. Um, I'll help him write a few message, but I think it's, it's so important for them to know that every present they open, they, it needs to go, come with a, uh, every present is a card, that they would need to write a card and tell people, whoever gave them the gift, thank you. Um, and, and I think it's just so important that they know that people spend the time looking for a present for them and ordering the present and rocking it, and more importantly, coming to your birthday party to help you celebrate. The least you could do is to write a thank you note. Um, and so every year, usually I would, make the, the the goodie bag favorite. I would do a handmade invitation and I would do a coordinating thank you card. 
except 2020, because we all know 2020 was canceled. There was no party, so I didn't get a chance to work on any of these handmade things for birthday parties. Oh, by the way, we also had uh, Mother's Day, and I, I put together a little brunch outdoor, and it was super fun. I really went all out because that was the first time we all got together and sat down and had a meal with pandemic, right? I think everybody's got their shots, we feel comfortable, and so I had so much fun decorating for the, the brunch and making every single dish that was served. So I'll put a little video at the end of this to show you uh, what I worked on and, and it was just it was just so much fun. I think I just love incorporating handmade into um, everything. And so one of the things I talked about, I think it was episode one, was a Dresden plate that I made for my coffee maker. So I just wanted to show you real quick. All I did was I have a Dresden template. I think I actually downloaded this off, um, off you know, online and it was like free. But basically, and if, you, if it's too big or too small, you can always just shrink it using your coffee machine, a, a coffee machine. And I, all I did was I sewed all of them together. I placed it on top of a quilting, a quilt batting. I quilted it. Obviously the center was a, a big hole because when you make dress and plate, the center is a hole when I placed it on the uh, quilting bed. Then I placed the back uh, right side down and I sew the edge so it closes in. Then I flipped it over and I cut off the, I cut off the hole from the batting and then I turn it inside out. And obviously there's a hole right here that I cut out. But then what you do is you put this, uh, app you applicate a circle on top of it. And so what's over here is, you know, a, a, I, I snipped it so I could turn it inside out, but then I flattened it out and I put this, this piece on top of it. So you can see, this is a Dresden plate that I use and I put my coffee maker on top of it. I have quilted uh, uh, floor mat in my kitchen that are similar colors. So I try to use coordinating colors in my kitchen so it's not hodgepodge of everything, right? So at least they all kind of go together. I have a, I, I, because I was looking for this, I found a couple of other random pieces that I, that I keep. So here's one that I've made. It was uh, featured in the magazine a long time ago. I love these little mug rugs. They come in so handy. Sometimes I, I just put a little boss on top of it or I would use it to put um, coffee on top of it. It just doesn't ruin my, so that the, the, the water doesn't ruin my, my tabletop, right? So here's another one. Here's Kat Kitson. I picked up this fabric on a trip. I love buying fabric when I'm traveling because then when I use it, it reminds me of my, my trip that I went on. So I bought this and I turned them, it was actually a, a large quilt that I made my daughter and I used a scrap to make a little coordinating uh, mat that I, I, I used to put this in her room. I don't remember exactly what said on this, but this I remember this was in her room. My daughter, when she was little, she would sketch uh, these little uh, characters. I, I'm covering up her some info here, but what I did was I I uh, embroidered on top of it with my sewing machine and a little piece of fabric and just a cute little thing. I wanted it to actually I did. I made two bookmarks with her drawing for my for her grandparents, for my in laws. Um, you know, I just, um, I think it's so cute, right? I, I made this a long time ago. At the time it was just cute, but now I look back and I think it's super cute. And actually what I'm covering up is her name that she wrote, right? So it's, you know, a little like four or five year old writing, um, but now it's quilted and it's it's there forever, right? It's, it's you know, it's, I think it's different from a piece of paper. Um, here's another quilt that I made her. And I, what I did was I, uh, took the leftover fabric and made a matching little mini quilt for her doll. So the large quilt actually looks just like this, but obviously much larger, but this is a smaller version. So anyways, just um, just thought I would show you a couple of random things that I worked on. Oh, one other thing I should show you is as I was working on her uh, invitation, there are all these little pieces. I just kept it in one of these watercoloring tray thing because that way, I can keep the little pieces organized. So hopefully you can see it. So anyways, I know this is kind of a, an odd episode where I talked about a little bit of everything, but hopefully you're inspired. And with summer coming up, maybe, you know, if you decide to host a little birthday party or just a little get together, I encourage you to maybe incorporate some of your handmade items. 
I guarantee it will bring you a lot of joy. So at the end of this episode, I will be sure to insert some of the videos and pictures of all the little miscellaneous things that I've been working on. And again, don't forget to leave a comment below. And what I'll do is I think I would just use like a random comment generator and just randomly select a, um, you know, anyone who leaves a comment below and maybe I'll give you guys like, you know, two, three weeks, I'll, I'll draw a winner and maybe I'll just pop them in this exact same episode or in the next episode where I'll just reach out to whomever the person is. And what I'll do is I think I will probably do like a quoted uh, pouch, uh, one of the pouches that I've shown in my uh, episode four. I think I'll just select one, we'll work with you and let you pick one out. And hopefully you've enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you soon. Bye.